friends, and this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension. And today we will be clearing any outdated Guru Master contracts. And um, let us talk about Gurus and Guru contracts first of all. And I had personally two formal Guru initiation in this lifetime um, into different traditions called Sampradayas. Mm -hmm. So I'm not an armchair philosopher here. Um, so this is what I learned about guru contracts. Generally they're done as, is, as long as you follow the rules and regulation, the guru will incarnate again and again to save you. Mm -hmm. And the guru will also absorb your karma initially, so um, that you um, get a jump start in your spiritual evolution. And with saving you, I meant um, liberating you from the circle of reincarnation, the samskara, this wheel of being born and again and again and again and again into this suffering world. And you know, also the promises, promises of Buddhism is based on this. So also the uh, guru is supposed to be, you know, the via media, you know, of your adoration. So there's this thing of guru puja or worshipping, you know, giving good energy, good chi to your spiritual master. Um, but this is not supposed to be used for his personal consumption. But this is supposed to, you know, go down the disciplic succession, you know, from one spiritual master, you know, to the other. So, you know, everybody has their master. So it's going down the disciplic succession that is called the parampara in Sanskrit. And <clears throat> um, basically, you know, then go all the way to source ultimately. That sounds like a pyramid scheme, doesn't it? So, and the duty of the physical guru is to get his disciple in touch with his own inner guru. And by more modern understanding, you know, this would be your own high self or the over soul, you know, or all the way up to source that you have direct communication with source. So your guru is not supposed to be eternally between you and source, not at all. His duty is to hook you up, and then step out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there is generally also, you know, a giving up of personal power, you know, of decision making to the guru, you know, have him run your life. I mean, for instance, I, I realized that I would not be able to get up every morning at four o'clock in the morning and do my two hour meditations. You know, but in an ashram, you know, you just got to do it. You know, you have to show up, you know, or you are out. You know, it's just like having a job to do. You know, you have to show up. And also, you know, in other aspects, many times, your guru determines, you know, what you do as your service or job or, you know, what type of spiritual workout, you know, a sadhana you do. And he may even arrange a marriage for you. And let me tell you, I have seen horrible abuse you know, of arranged marriages, you know, where one guru intentionally arranged bad marriages, so his disciples will not get attached to the physical pleasures of life. And um, there is then also the aspect of having to drink the local Kool-Aid, that means to surrender um, many times to the circular logic, you know, of your guru. And that means circular logic, you know, this is true because the super holy divine grace, his guru said so. You know, that's not really, you know, by logic. And if you do not agree, you know, the door is over there. You know, and uh, <laughs> so, um, that is great, you know, if your guru is 100% pure and in touch with, you know, his inner divine guidance, you know, when he makes decisions. But sometimes, you know, the reality is that the guru is trained in scriptures, 
written and has all the answers to possible questions already prefabricated. Mm -hmm. Just like, I mean, a Christian preacher, you know, has a Bible verse or two, you know, for every situation, or a martial artist, you know, has blocks for different types of attacks. <laughs> Uh, so also most gurus, you know, um, follow the old, you know, um, um, recipes, you know, that have been handed down for ages. So it's not necessary that they are enlightened, you know, um, they just, you know, know their spiritual Kung Fu, they're more like scholars. So then also with some metaphysical clubs, you also have to vow, you know, to open yourself up to severe punishment if you tell any secrets, you know, or um, spill any kind of beans. And let me tell you, you know, this is some very severe stuff that you have to sign up for. Mm -hmm. And also in many spiritual clubs, you donate part of your life force into the pool, you know, into the part, the common part, that the organization can use for its own purpose. Um, well, basically, you're setting yourself up for vampirism if your spiritual master is under the influence of the dark side, you know, and so there may be some sterling pure spiritual masters out there, but mostly it is a mixed bag. You know, I mean, <laughs> I've dealt with a lot of disappointed disciples, and you know, and you're looking at one here. So, um, by the way, you know, this can also apply to healers, massage therapists, or energy workers, you know, that plug their innocent victims, you know, and start sucking their life force. Of course, they're not expressed contracts there, um, but in degree, you know, this can also happen with these type of people. And so many of my clients, you know, come to me with this kind of cording. You know, and cords are where your energy is being exchanged with somebody. I have videos on cording if you want to um, polish up on that topic. So, um, most of the time when this happens, there is also like a past life history you know, with these people. So, I mean, nothing really to be paranoid about, you know, just be aware, you know, of your energies and, and trust your intuition. You know? And I'm not trouncing here alternative healers, because there are a lot, you know, of really, really bad apples in the mainstream power position. You know? um, like doctors, professors, and, and this and that, you know, um, so there are more people in mainstream to worry about maybe than in the spiritual traditions. And also many times, you know, this guru is on this level and it's just what you need, you know, and then when you're done with this level, you know, and uh, there might be another guru that brings you to the another level. Of course, according to the tradition, you know, you're not supposed to surpass your guru. You know, that's it for the rest of your life. <laughs> so you're stuck with the system. You know, it is really frowned upon to, you know, cast gurus aside. You know, it's just like a wife, seen like a wife that you reject. But, um, you know, um, I would say, you know, your commitment is to source and becoming enlightened and not to some kind of organization. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, trusting your guru, you know, or anybody you give your power um, away, it's like, um, you know, sometimes you feel like a lost dog at the New York bus terminal. <laughs> you know, who can you trust in all this car? You know, how does a dog know which human is good and benevolent and which one is not? So anybody, you know, uh, that can help, you know, is welcome in such a situation. But then, you know, most of the humans are, of course, not saints. And um, most saints are also kind of quite extremistic, <laughs> you know, extremist mm -hmm, fanatics. So um, this is, of course, what I'm talking about, densely encoded material. It has to be probably listened to several times you know, to reveal the deeper layers of this. 
And uh, please, you know, thank me um, by giving a thumbs up and subscribing and ringing the bell. Of course, telling your friends and leaving comments, you know, to spread this message. So, um, first of all, you know, we asked um, that everything that happens in and from this guided meditation and the information I'm giving is going to turn out for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. And also ask that will attract those people that will benefit from this video and distract or limit the energy flow of anybody that is not ready, you know, for this. And I also ask the Archangel Michael and Gabriel to please protect us you know, from the attention, manipulation, attacks and revenge of the dark hearts, you know, the service to sell beings, you know, throughout all levels, you know, of the creation. You know, also in parallel timelines, you know, and for our twin flames. Amen. And I suggest that you agree with this. You know, it's your life. Mm -hmm. Now close your eyes and then imagine um, that there is this column of light. It is, you know, about three feet in diameter, about a meter in diameter. And this goes over you and connects you to the center of Milky Way and to the center of Earth, Gaia. And now we ask the source and the angels of love and light and our spirit guides to clear any earth star blocks and soul and star connections of any parasites and interference and trauma on all levels of our being and also on parallel timelines. Amen. And also please exclude any service to self entities and also exclude and transmute any dark thought forms from others that are still affecting us. Mm -hmm. And also exclude and transmute any thought forms, you know, that we ourselves created. Mm -hmm. And then bring in love and light. Amen. And smile. Mm -hmm. And breathe very deeply all the way in. And all the way out. And smile. And on the inhale, pull the love of the Earth Goddess into your heart. And on the exhale, send that love out the top of the head. As if you squirt a fountain, you know, out the top of the head. Like a whale, you know, breathing through your fontanella. Mm -hmm. And smile. And now we invite all our soul aspects that are approved by our own high self, you know, for assistance now. Um, and smile, so it takes about five seconds before you can feel their presence fully. And here they're coming in and pull in their love and send your love back. And of course, we ask for protection, you know, that only the beings of love and light can come to us. Um, and now on the inhale, just imagine that you're pulling through your legs and through your, the bottom of your spine, you know, love into your body from the earth goddess. Just inhale deeply. And then send it back into the earth and go back and forth, just like the ocean, you know, dips at the beach, coming the waves rolling up the beach and then coming down and that same movement, you know, you bring that love from the earth goddess into your heart and send it back into your heart. And now we also call onto your spirit guides of love and light, the protecting angels, and also, you know, your incarnations, where you incarnated in higher planetary systems, like the Pleiades, Arcturus, and other star systems, mm -hmm, those of love and light, and those that are approved by your high self, are invited now. 
Amen. So keep on breathing love and smile. And now their love is coming in. Mm -hmm. And pull their love with your breath into your heart. And on the exhale, send your love to them. Go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And we thank them all for coming and we ask that they help us to clear any outdated you know, gurus or master and disciple contracts that are not helping us anymore, that are not for the highest good anymore. Um, now the first thing is we ask that we get, you know, a sign for what is yes for us. So for some of you, you may hear yes or see a thumbs up. For many, or it might just be a flow of energy, like a positive energy. You know, I generally look for a flow from the heart to the head. That would be a yes, like an upper deep feeling. And please give us a yes now. Amen. And if you couldn't feel this, we ask that it be made a lot stronger now. A lot stronger. Mm -hmm. And please give us a nice yes now. Amen. Okay, well, I hope it did not knock off your headphones. And now, please give us a now, which would be a feeling of from the heart going down into your feet. That's kind of like a downer feeling. Mm -hmm. So please give us a no now. Amen. And for those, you know, that didn't feel this, make it really strong. Knock their socks off, please. Now. Amen. All right. And if you didn't get this, you may maybe benefit more um, from using the pendulum. But even if you get a yes or no or some strong impression from any of those questions that are coming, you know, you're doing really good. So first of all, have you been a disciple of a spiritual master? Yes or no? And did you get bound or enslaved as a disciple by your spiritual master? Yes or no? And keep on smiling and breathing love. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're still trapped on the astral plane. Yes or no? And about how many of them are trapped? And how many of them are trapped because they are contractually bound? And let's see if you have an amount assumed of 100%, how much of your suffering comes from them. And let us assume that you have available 100% of energy and how much of that energy is drained through them. And how are they affecting you in general? There may be some situation coming up. And let us assume that we release them and have these contacts clear. How would you feel in three months time? Just pay attention.
And how will it feel in three months' time if you do nothing, you know, just let it slide the way you're doing it now? Now, have you been cursed by your spiritual authorities? No, um, I pissed off my guru. <laughs> so, have you been cursed by your spiritual authorities? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And of course, not all gurus and spiritual masters are of the light. You know, some of them are explicitly, you know, on the dark side. And nothing hidden. Mm -hmm. So, how many of your disciple aspects were well, explicitly on the dark side? In how many of your past life aspects were well meaning but you know were misguided? by fanatics, completely out of balance. And how many lifetimes are still bound to certain bogus or useless traditions, you know, where no effect is being reached, just a holding pattern? And how many lifetimes of yours are still bound to a certain dark tradition? And how many contracts you know, with the word eternity or the meaning eternity in it? And how many um, curses or contracts, you know, stating that you cannot surpass your spiritual master? And how many my way or you are blocked curses and contracts are still affecting you? And how many do not seek any other teachers or path like bindings and contracts are still affecting you? And how many um, you will always be my bitch or subordinate curses or contracts are still affecting you? And how many, I will always get your energy, curses and contracts are affecting you. And in how many lifetimes did you grant access to your energies and it's being misused? In how many lifetimes, you know, this is still affect you negatively. And how many vows of silence, you know, for forbidden teachings are still controlling you and limiting your expression? Are there still any other people that are considered an authority and 
which you gave access to your energies and they are abusing it. Are there any massage therapists? This or past lifetime sucking on you? Yes or no? Are you called it by mainstream doctors or nurses? Yes or no? Are you called it or negatively influenced by mainstream therapists? Like Psychiatrists or psychologists, yes or no? Are you being vampired or controlled by mainstream priests, yes or no? Are you unduly controlled or vampired by so-called spiritual healers? Yes or no? And are you unduly plugged by certain psychics? Yes or no? And now? Please smile, and we ask Archangel Michael and all the other beings of love and light, also Source, mm -hmm, to please remove, you know, all these bindings, mm -hmm. um, you know, and bring any perpetrators to the courts of divine justice. And any beings that are stuck there, um, also bring them you know, to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples now and bathe them in unconditional love and reunite them with lost loved ones and show them the higher perspective of their life. We will get back to them. Okay. Now keep on smiling and reconnect to the love in your heart. So pull the love from the earth goddess into your heart. And then just exhale it to your whole body. Smile and back. So, have you been a guru in past lifetimes or spiritual master? Yes or no? And of course, with spiritual master, you could have been an abt or a pope or a bishop, you know, or some Zen master, you know, or some druid you know, from any tradition or something. Did you bind or enslave your disciples? Yes or no? And are uh, some of them still trapped on the astral plane? Yes or no? And how many? Ballpark. And if you have about a hundred percent of suffering in your life, how much? of your suffering comes from them. And how much of your energy comes from them? How much are you taking from them? Like 20% of your life was 50%, 10%. Uh, maybe they are draining your energy. Are they draining your energy? Yes or no? How much of your energy are they draining if you have a hundred percent energy? And how are your disciples that are still stuck affecting you in general?
keep on smiling. And let's say, you know, we are able to release them, to let them go, you know, clear all the contracts and bindings onto them. How will it feel? How will your life change? Within three months, how will you feel? And how will you feel if you let it slide? Mm -hmm. And how will it feel in three months? Compare. Ah, uh, there's still any guru aspects mm -hmm. of you trapped due to disciples that are dragging their feet. Mm -hmm. And you were contractually bound to save them, yes or no. And how many aspects, guru aspects, are trapped due to this? And how many of your guru aspects were walking knowingly on the dark side? And how many of your spiritual master's aspects were well-meaning, but misguided fanatics? And how many guru lifetimes are still bound to a certain bogus ineffective tradition? And how many contracts with disciples have eternity in it? And we definitely want to have those cleared. You know, anything with eternity should be cleared by default. For me, Amen. And how many he cannot surpass me curses and contracts did you cast onto your disciples or other people? And how many my way or you are blocked curses did you cast? You know, um, this means if your um, disciple doesn't follow your teachings, you know, everything will be stopped. So, you know, they're quite fanatics, even in martial arts. Yeah, you know, it's only, you know, this way, this is the best martial artist. Uh, <laughs> you know, everybody thinks they're the best. So, um, anyhow. Um, how many, you know, my way or your blocked curses have you cast? And how many do not seek any other teachers or path bindings or curses did you cast? And how many bitch spells or be my subordinate? Did you cast onto others? And how many, um, you know, predatory cord access spells <laughs> to your disciples did you cast that are still there? And how many vows of silence for forbidden teachings are you still controlling? And I hope, you know, times have changed and no more binding to those. If it's for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And of course, we also give permission to remove all their bindings, you know, and send people to divine justice departments if necessary. And are there any other lifetimes where you were considered an authority and got access to people's energies and abused it? Where you are a massage therapist, How many as a mainstream doctor? How 
many as the mainstream therapists like psychologists or psychiatrists. And how many lifetimes did you pray as a mainstream priest? And how many lifetimes did you pray as a spiritual healer? And how many lifetimes did you pray as a psychic? And now we ask that the most divine, most capable ascension teams that are approved by source, that are approved by our high self, you know, I suggest for myself, as the Arcturian love healing and ascension teams, please bring any stuck spirits or ghosts of all the bogus gurus or compromised gurus, spiritual teachers as well, as all the disciples from our past lifetimes and also from those past lifetimes of our ancestors, you know, where we also get the karma from, to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples. Amen. If there are any bad apples among them that do not want to turn to the light, Please bring them to the highest courts of divine justice. Amen. And also please reunite, you know, the one in the Arcturian Love Healing and Ascension Temples with other lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral planes, like lost baby spirit, sweethearts, grannies, even pets like horses, dogs, or cats. Hmm? And once reunited, please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnation. What was karma? What was volunteered for to learn a lesson? And what was the sabotage by the dark side? And then help them with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness does not mean that these deeds, you know, were appropriate or correct. It just means we don't want personal revenge. We have divine justice, basically the laws of karma, you know, make the balance. Um, and then help them with forgiveness. And once they forgive, and ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness. We ask Absolute Source in its mercy to please clear any entanglements that still bind them together, you know, like vows of subordination, servitude to others, you know, where we renounce uh, our divine sovereignty, or any negative contracts, promises, curses, or limit us to our spiritual abilities and other abilities. You know, also any limiters or blocks, you know, to access of our divinity. Also clear any dark black magic, candle magic, any forms of bindings, bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, limiters, or blocks, cages, you know, pokers, rings, reverse crowns, skull caps, <laughs> plates, <laughs> and anything that blocks our spiritual power, prosperity, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. Uh, and smile, and just keep on running source, source love or earth love, depending on your abilities. We might just get a little dizzy now. You probably will be tingling all over your body. Uh -huh. Just keep on breathing, keep on smiling. And just pump love. 
We also ask for the presence of expert healing teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony for the most benevolent outcomes. You know, to please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma to healing energy and upgrade us to our latest divine blueprint as much as possible and of course it has to be done with the permission of your high self Amen. and you can just nod your head and you keep on pumping love and now we ask that if any darkness has attached to you you know in this session or before the session as, as much as being removed from you as it is possible now and that you be surrounded by a protective aura Amen and one, two, three you're coming now back to vacant day consciousness completely grounded and full of energy one, two, three well, welcome back Mm, um, I hope um, this meditation helps you. You should feel lighter. Um, you know, some of you may got a lot of answers. This really depends on your past, of course, and your sensitivity. I suggest that you drink a lot of water after this meditation. You know, if you get a headache, uh, you will have to drink more water because you're detoxing. As always, if you responded well to this guided meditation, you will probably want to try out my other videos, or even get a personal session with me. I can give you much more attention and help you. And also thank you for giving thumbs up or subscribing, you know, ringing the bell and telling your friends and leaving comments, you know, smile like an idiot as an expression of your gratitude. I love you. I will see you again.